Okay, as long as we're talking about variables, let's go ahead and talk about variable scope because that's a pretty important topic and it seems to seems to be, I don't know about a source of confusion, but um, beginners and people that are new to SIS tend to have, have problems with, with scope for some reason. As they, as, as I, I suppose they tend to have problems with scope in any programming language, right? In any programming environment that they, that they deal with when they're new. So <clears throat> scope is basically, oh God, I don't want to call it a roadblock, but scope is a, a visionary thing right it 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 talks of it how do i explain this it's different modules in the in your package can only have access to certain variables okay it defines the boundaries of your variables that's probably a good way to say it it, it defines your, the boundaries so let's go ahead and and go with a couple examples since i can't seem to do anything but stutter a couple examples probably will uh will serve this a little bit better Let's grab a sequence container. We'll grab a for loop container. Uh, let's grab uh, an execute SQL task. Let's grab a script task. There we go. Doesn't really matter because we're not really going to do anything with these. Now, if I, if I click here on an empty space, and I'm just left clicking on an empty space in here, you notice how when I create a variable, the variable is going to be at the package scope. That means that as I click on these guys, look over here on the left. Every one of these guys, stop it. Every one of these guys can see this package level variable because it's available to the entire package. But let's say that I click on this sequence container and then I click on variable one, and I'm just going to say, I'm just going to name it sequence. But you notice how its scope is the sequence container. You notice how absolutely everybody doesn't have the ability to see it. Stop that. Only the sequence container can see it. See, there it is. When I highlight sequence, there's the sequence variable. When I highlight the execute SQL task, it goes away. When I do it again, it comes back. When I click into the package, it goes away. So only this sequence container <coughs> can see that variable. And the same thing goes for all of these others, right? If I highlight the loop container, stop that. If I highlight the loop container and create a variable, see it's going to be the for loop. So I'll call it for loop. Okay? So now when I highlight the sequence, that goes away. When I highlight that one, that goes away. When I come back here, that one goes away. But you notice that the variable is the one that's always there because it's at the package level. There's my, my for loop again. There's my sequence again. Okay, now if I click in package again, then I have variable one at the package scope, right? And as I click through here, I've got sequence and two package level variables. I've got loop and two package level variables, and neither one of these guys can see variables yet. And so, so that's, that's the, the crux of scope. I mean, there's, there's not really too much more to it than that. And all it really does is protect variables from being accessed from other portions of the script when they don't need to be. So if you have a loop, you know, in a, in a script task, and you've named, you know, a variable i, and you want it to be able to to access that and you've got a variable named i and another one you know they'll have a different scope so you can have variables with the same names because um, it's the same thing as in SQL right you can have tables with the same names as long as they're in different schemas so look at scope as different schemas right um, it's just a container that says you know which objects inside of your package have rights to see you know which variables and that's really all there is to it but anyway that's that's a variable scope